We are back inside the TCO studios here in Egan. My name is Gabe Henderson. Today, I have the special privilege of being joined by Beth Moens, who is a pioneer in the sport casting industry. In case you don't know who Beth Moens is, she is the first female since 1987 to call an NFL game on broadcast TV. This week, she'll be calling the Vikings game, in which will make her the first female to call a regular season Vikings game on broadcast TV, which she's on the call at U.S. Bank Stadium calling the Vikings versus Jaguars game 12 p.m. on CBS. Beth, congratulations and thank you for joining me. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure to uh, to be a part of, of all of this. You know, when, when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, uh, some of my fondest memories uh, were, were those great Vikings and, and Cowboys matchups in the heyday of, of the Steelers and and uh, the purple people leaders and the dolphins. So it's it's uh, great to be able to be a part of a, a Vikings telecast. I've always said play by play is the mastery of professional reaction. So the mm -hmm. opportunity and preparation that took you that it took you to get to this point to be able to inspire. Who do you accredit that to? Well, I, I got some great advice when I was younger, um, starting out with my mother, who told me that I could do this when I first saw Phyllis George on the old NFL Today show. And then the advice was go get a liberal arts background as an English major and do a lot of reading and writing and work on your communica uh, your communication skills, get a wide balance of knowledge that, that you can draw on, and then go and do your, your broadcast journalism and your play-by-play -play stuff at nights and weekends and over the summer. And so that's what I did. And you know, one of the things I still have with me uh, by my side for every game is my thesaurus on dictionary.com. <laughs> I've got that app ready to roll, finding the perfect word for the perfect situation, Gabe. Um, and it was just really a, a love of sports. I, my dad was a high school basketball coach. I grew up with three brothers and all the kids in our neighborhood, you know, loved uh, wiffle ball and kickball and football and, and basketball. So I, I had a lot of knowledge of the game and a lot of opportunities to call games while I was playing games from a very early age and, and that carried into adulthood as well. And that's carried until this week, week 13 mm -hmm. Vikings versus Jaguars, five and six versus one and 10. What, what are your thoughts on this game? Well, obviously, you know, we j just had a chance to talk with some of the Vikings and, and it's certainly a feeling of a must win game where you're going to be a big favorite uh, against a team that comes in losers of, of their last 10. So I think that's the vibe around the Vikings locker room. Uh, and you tack onto that the fact that they've won for their last five. Uh, th there's a lot of positives right now. And, and I think a lot of that, you know, um, lends to the fact that there is now hope right a after the one and five start and a lot of uncertainty hope about a playoff run changes everything around a football team and you definitely get that sense with minnesota so i i i think we'd all be a little surprised if they don't come out hot they've been one of the best scoring teams in the first first quarter the jags one of the worst scoring teams in the first quarter so i think we're going to find out a lot about the direction of this game game in the first 15 minutes I'm going to get a little off script here because, of course, we know the Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl voting has started. You can vote on Twitter using the hashtag yes. Pro Bowl vote uh, with the first and last name of the player you want. So I'm going to ask you this. If you had to pick three players on this Vikings team to be selected to the Pro Bowl, who would they be and why? Well, I, I've seen the early voting, uh, Gabe, and it certainly looks like Dalvin Cook is a fan favorite mm -hmm. uh, in the top five. So I, I think I got to go with D.C. and the year that he has. And then, you know what, after talking with the coaching staff, I think I'm going to go with two of the guys who have had an immediate impact and have been getting a lot of praise, and that's the rookies. I'm going to go Justin Jefferson, and I'm going to throw some love to the biggins, and I'm going to go 6'6", 311-pounder, <laughs> second-round pick out of Boise State, Ezra Cleveland. I'm going to throw Ezra a little love, love because it. the coaches say that his arrival in the starting lineup was a big part of the turnaround, and it looks like he's going to have a chance to come back and get some snaps this week. You talk about two rookies and transitioning to this Jacksonville Jaguars team. They have a pretty good rookie also, James Robinson. I mean, mm -hmm. he's third in the NFL in rushing yards. Uh, so when you think about Mike Zimmer right now, do you say, hey, let's stop James Robinson and let everybody else beat us on this Jaguar Jacksonville Jaguars team? Or do you say, let's focus on everyone else and let this one guy see if he can do whatever he can do against us? Yeah, I, I think you do, you you know your top priority going into any game is to try and take away the opponent's best option. Mm -hmm. So in that 
regard, I do think that um, stopping Robinson, preventing him from, you know, he loves running up the middle, prevent him from doing damage on, on first and second down. And, you know, as, as well as Mike Glennon played last week, I, I think the approach still has to be, let's make the quarterback beat us. And so get into those third and long situations, find out just how healthy, you know, DJ Chark is coming back, just how healthy LaVishka Chenault ha is. He, he hasn't had a touchdown catch since their season opener and, and kind of put the onus on him because James Robinson has looked so good and has, has been such a great uh, feel-good story around the NFL. You probably want to see if, if you can do your best to take him out of it. A lot of Vikings fans didn't expect for the Vikings to be one game away from 500 at this point of the season. Mm -hmm. If you would have asked them five or six weeks ago, this wasn't even uh, a possibility. So, but, but here we are. Here we are, five and six, and the Vikings have a chance to be 500. How do they do that against the Jacksonville Jaguars team coming to U.S. Bank Stadium this Sunday? Well, I think they do uh, what they have done so well since that by the defense. You know, they, they've talked a lot about building trust and the maturity of the younger guys, especially the two rookie corners. They've shaved about 10 points per game off of their scoring defense since that bye week. And then on the offensive side, they've cut way down on the turnovers um, from Kirk Cousins. And he's been one of, if not the best quarterback in the league since that buy, certainly the best passer rating since then. So if they can continue to take good care of the football, uh, those are going to be two of the big keys, I think, against Jacksonville. 12 p.m. on CBS. Beth Mullins, I'm looking forward to your call this upcoming Sunday. Best of luck. Thank you very much for having me, Gabe.